Thank you, everyone. Hi, I'm Gary Knoll, and today we have a unique approach to health. What we're going to do is we're going to show you how you can make enormous changes in your health. And it's going to be simple, nothing complex, and I'm going to take you through what we're doing wrong, the options, what we can do right, and then the ideal. We're going to make it simple, 15 foods that will change your life for the better. And then I'm going to show you how to make those foods delicious, nutritious, in fact, gourmet. You heard me right. You don't have to be a chef because we have brought in master chefs. You're going to see how they do it, and they're going to teach you how to make this this easy. Let's begin. First of all, we have an epidemic of disease in this country. We're going to spend $2.3 trillion this year on disease. And unfortunately, after the war on cancer, the war on AIDS, the war on heart disease, the war on depression and diabetes and obesity, we have a medical Vietnam. We are not reversing in any major way any of those conditions. To the contrary, our lifestyle is contributing. There's no mystery about what causes illness. Just imagine, this is the first generation where many of our children will actually die before their parents. That's never happened before in American history. I'm not talking about dying from infections or some type of uh, epidemic. I'm talking about dying because their lifestyle is so horrific that they won't live to be 77 or 80. They might be dying of a heart attack or a stroke in their 40s or 50s. You can have an epidemic of obesity and diabetes in children, including adult diabetes, and arthritis and heart disease, and expect them to live a long life. It's just not going to happen. These are the culprits. Take a look. Hot dogs, hamburgers, french fries, pizzas, uh, different types of chips, cakes, refined carbohydrates, and colas and coffee and artificial sweeteners. These are the problems. Now, why are they problems? because they cause inflammation. Now, how do they do that? Simple. Let's say that you have a hot dog. In order to eat a hot dog, it has to be cooked. In the cooking process, the proteins are converted into what we call heterocyclic amines. That's a chemical that comes anytime you really cook any kind of meat. That's a carcinogen. It damages the DNA, damages our cell. Then you have a bun. A bun is a refined carbohydrate. In order to make the bun, a chemical process occurs, and that process ends up with a product called acrylamide. And acrylamide is also a carcinogen. You drink a cola, you're absolutely overstimulating the body with caffeine, and the cola causes gross distress upon our digestive apparatus. As a result, a lot of people today have gastric reflux, mainly because of caffeinated beverages like coffee and sodas. And then we have a lot of people suffering from obesity. It's relatively simple. There's no mystery about it. Most people are overweight because excess calories coming in, not enough exercise to cause them to be burned off. And we accumulate them. And remember, there is no such thing as being a healthy overweight person. That is a myth. Because when you're overweight, you increase your likelihood of cancer, arthritis, hypertension, heart attack, dementia, all those things come, and depression when you're overweight. Because fat accumulates toxins. So the more overweight you are, the more toxins you're carrying around. So we want to burn the fat, get you healthy, detoxify the body, and the good news is we can do it. Now I'm going to give you a series of food groups. And these food groups I want you to include one a week, unless you're really going to go gun ho because it's, it's an easy transition. Let go of one of these bad food groups per week and include one of the good ones per week so you make a transition. Now, I'm also going to show you that everything on this table you can actually eat from healthy foods. Not even healthy, but spectacularly healthy. Living foods, the ultimate food, one that hasn't even been cooked. It's enzyme-rich, phytonutrient-rich, it's antioxidant-rich, it's easily digested protein rich. It's rich in fiber and chlorophylls. The blood of the plant is chlorophyll. 
it enhances our blood. Yeah. So you're going to see that that cake, I'll show you how we can make that cake without even using flour. Yeah. And I'll show you how to make a pizza that has no dairy and no wheat at all in it. That's all healthy. And I'll show you how to make french fries that have no trans fats or saturated fats or all that sodium. So it's not as if you have to deprive yourself of something that you really like, it's you have to be of a mind to make a transition from something that's not healthy, causes disease, and there's no, look, there's no longer a mystery. And by the way, don't for a second allow anyone in Congress or any, the Surgeon General or anyone else say, oh, we're not certain. Yeah, they're not certain. Whose payroll are they on? Who have they been influenced by? There's absolute certainty none of this stuff is good for you, it's all bad for you. What they don't know is at what day you're going to wake up and have a heart attack or stroke or your joints are going to be stiff or inflammation or fibromyalgia or macular degeneration because of the free radicals. Because everything here causes free radicals. And free radicals are what attack the cell. Now you have anywhere from 64 trillion to 100 trillion cells. That's a lot of cells. One glass of alcohol can destroy a million brain cells, heart cells, liver, and kidney cells. Could you imagine if your skin were transparent so you could actually see right into the body? So everything you consumed, you could actually see what it does. What a difference would be our approach. I've traveled all over the world. I've met wonderful cultures. And in every culture, they have ways of helping people prevent illness or to get well naturally. And I've included those in the foods I'm going to show you. So we're going to shift our attention from this that causes disease. And by the way, don't ever, ever in your lifetime, even if you're five years old, don't ever expect the government to be honest and tell you this causes disease. You're dealing with billion dollar industries and they're not going to give up for a second trying to sell you something that the only outcome is going to be sickness. And they're supported by Wall Street. They buy the scientists. And therefore, when a scientist then says, oh, we need more studies. No, the tobacco industry played that game for 100 years. Oh, we need another study. We had 100,000 studies showing cigarette smoking was bad for us. Didn't stop them from trying to convince us to keep smoking. And I'm saying, this is no better than cigarette smoking. All right? But this is. Here's the good news. Let's shift to the good news. Now, in front of me are 15 different types of foods. And each one of these plays a different role. And the key is the more variety you have in your diet each day, either eating it or juicing it, the healthier you're going to be. People say, where am I going to get my protein? All right, I grew up in a small town in West Virginia where everyone thought you had to have meat three times a day. So it was absolutely common for people to have three or four eggs, sausage or ham for breakfast. They'd have a grilled cheese sandwich or something for lunch. And they'd have big roast beef or two inch thick uh, cut of of meat with big fat around it for dinner. Vegetables were an afterthought. Fruit was only occasional. And then we wonder why nobody ever got younger when they got older and no one ever looked or was healthier the older they got. And we expected people to have diabetes and be overweight. It was just accepted. But it was because we weren't eating these. I don't remember my life ever eating black beans. I didn't even see them. Or black eyed peas or green lentils and yellow lentils and split peas and uh, kidney beans. Nobody had this stuff, not where I grew up. And this is why all the people I grew up with in my family are dead. All my aunts, all my uncles, mother, father, older brother, only one surviving um, member of my family, my brother, and that's because he eats healthy. Now, when you eat beans, and there are over 65 variety of beans, which means you have enormous amount of, of options of how you want to make these. You soak them overnight, and if you use some vinegar in it, and then you cook them, you don't get the gas. And you can make those beans and put them into a salad. You, you make them and you run cold water on them, and blanch them down, then in a salad, it's great. <clears throat> you can stir fry those with different our herbs, use them with brown rice. What's important about all these legumes and beans is that they're complete protein. That means, complete means that they have all eight essential amino acids. Now your body, your musculature system, hormones, these are made from proteins. Proteins are made from amino acids. 
So the amino acids in a hot dog and the amino acids in 